Okay, guys, I'm going to try to do this while my granddaughter's asleep. It's been a rough morning, you guys. All right, the Lord gave me this about 12, 1 o'clock last night, and pretty much through the whole night since I couldn't sleep because I drank a Dr. Pepper. He kept telling me and telling me, and I read it early this morning, and so I'm bringing it out. And I don't know who this is for, but I'm just going to obey the Lord. And it's Titus 2. It says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, tempered, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged woman likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. They that may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chase keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. It's work. Marriage is work. In doctoring, sowing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is in the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. They shouldn't have anything evil to say of you. Amen? Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things. That's everything, honey. That's everything. A woman goes out of her way extra for her husband. Extra. Extra affection. Extra love. Extra things you do in the house. Extra. You're going beyond. You're doing 110%. Not just 25%, okay? What happened to the 75? You see what I'm saying? You have to go in 100% or 110% if you want your marriage to work out. Amen? And to please them well in all things. You're supposed to please them. Not answering again. You just do it without even a qualm, without arguing, without the debate, without just, I ain't going to do it. I refuse. Go beyond. If you want a good marriage, a good marriage, firm foundation, woman of God, stand firm, stand still, be submissive. Humble yourself and be your husband's help mate. Your marriage will last a long time. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to
to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And that is the facts. Whew. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You see, a lot of young women don't really... Let me finish the last verse and then I'll say. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise this. <laughs> We're not of this world. We're not supposed to get wrapped up in all the worldly things. That's what's wrong with a lot of marriages today. There's no humbling yourself. There's no commit commitment to each other. Because see, when you get married, you become one. One. Where, where, where it is divided, it will not stand. You can't be doing your own thing. You got to be lined up with God's will. If you want a godly marriage, you have to do these things. You can't you can't just push it aside and think you can do your own thing. It doesn't work that way and it will never work. Been there done that. I was a control freak. The first 5 years of my marriage, I didn't want to submit. I didn't want him to tell me nothing. But then God started teaching me that I am his helpmate and I am to do everything that I can do to make his life easier. Why? Because he loves me and he loved my children and he took good care of us and they work hard. Yeah, a lot of guys don't get credit for it nowadays. It's all about what the woman wants, and I want this, and I, I want that, and it's going to be my way. Well, no, honey, it's not going to be your way. It's going to be God's way if you want it to succeed. So my point is, God gave me this, okay? We're not, we're not of this world. We are peculiar people. But we are supposed to do things, and our map here on earth is the Bible. And it's going to teach us what is right and what is wrong. Whether you like it or not, you are to follow what God says. Okay? It's not for a, the man to put his thumb on us and... Oh, you're going to do what I say. And oh, you can't do this and you can't this and that. No. He, he made you one. And you're supposed to flow in everything together as one. And yes, the husband is the head of the house. He is the head of the house. So he has the final say-so. But the thing of it is, is some people fail to realize, is if it goes against God's word, and you are a godly woman, you are to stand up for God's ways and things. Yeah. But if the man is a godly man, he is the head of the house. Whether he be meek, whether he be aggressive, you know, to a certain extent, but not mean and not horrible and not treat you like a doormat. No, no, no. God does not attend that. To be ugly to you? No. You're to be one, working and thinking for things of God together. 
and doing it together and reaching people for the kingdom of God and you're teaching your children the right way the things of God and so if they stray when they become adults they'll come back because you taught them right I'm a living witness to that I taught my boys what the Word of God says you don't treat a woman like a doormat you treat her like your spouse the person you love and you share everything today it's it's crazy people don't look that way they don't think about the way God wants it to be and that's for you to be submissive be a Proverbs 31 woman do things for God for your family and do it most of all number one for God don't put your husband on a pedestal. Don't make him an idol. Mm-mm. God will take him out of the picture just like that. I made that mistake. I did. I put my husband before God. God is a very jealous God. And he'll take him out of the picture in a heartbeat. God wants his people male and female when they marry and they become one to be one to love one another to share with one another don't go to bed angry pray seek God and teach your children the things of God and live your life before them everything you say and everything you do you're living your life before them in the way God wants you to live your life. Yeah, you know, I raised my kids every time the door was open we were in church. And yeah, they rebelled. Oh, yes, they rebelled. But I know that my husband and I raised our children in the ways of God. Spiritual things. All of it because that's what we are required to do we are to raise our children to know the ways of God so that when they become adults and if they stray they will come back they will because you taught them the way God told you to teach them and women I'm sorry the world has gone crazy now and it's not all about you it's not the husband is the head of the house he is the head of the house if he is a man of God and you are a woman of God just learn how to submit and then your marriage will just flow man y'all become best friends you live in the Word of God you flow in the Spirit of God and things just move better for you in your marriage without all the discord without all the arguing and fighting yeah there's guys out there that love a woman in control but let me tell you they're not in the right place they're not in the will of God a man is the head of the house. The woman is the help mate. You're supposed to do everything you can and above and be on to make their life happy. Whenever you figure that out and you get that down, man, it's easy peasy. It became a time in my marriage that my husband trusted me in what I thought in my decisions because we were one he learned me and I learned him and I knew that there was times that oh no I ain't not uh, I'm not giving no answer I have to ask my husband first and if he says it's okay it's okay but if he says no 
uh-uh. No matter how bad I want it. <laughs> no matter how bad I want to do it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. If he says no, that's his job is to protect you. That is his job to protect your children. See over the household. He is the one that brings in the money. He works to make you happy. And so it's our job to do everything that we can possibly do. If it's cooking, if it's keeping the house clean, if it's just a smile, if it's, you know, you know, whatever. You know, and it's love one another the way God wants you to love one another. Okay? So, that's the message I had this morning that God gave me. And uh, I hope it was for somebody because he, he gave it to me. So, anyway, I love you guys. And God bless you. And uh, I'm going to go check on my grandbaby. And I hope to see you tomorrow. But God only knows. So, I love you guys. Take care.